All right. Hello, everybody. This is Leo Brady with AmovieGuy.com. I am ecstatic. I'm so excited to be here today with the director, Dutch Southern, and the lead actor of their new film, Only the Good Survive. Thank you for being with me to being with me here today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, this is this is such a very unique film. Uh, it, it really has just a uh, your style and fingerprints all over it, Dutch. I mean, I, I, I feel like this is something that I love to see uh, from, a, from a new director. It's something that I've never really even seen before. Uh, can you sort of get into uh, your inspiration and, and how you really came up with the idea for this film? Uh, yeah, my, uh, my inspiration was that um, I wanted to make something uh, and put it out there. I would say like if I had to pick two or three films that inspired me most, it would be uh, a movie called Messiah of Evil by Gloria Katz and Will Hike, who are probably most famous for being George Lucas's writing partners. They did American Graffiti, they did Temple of Doom, and then they did an amazing movie called Howard the Duck. Uh, yes. This was the first movie. And then uh, they did, uh, another one would be a movie called Carnival of Souls. Uh, Love that movie. Harvey, yeah. And then the last and probably the most influential is uh, a movie called Smithereens, which was the first film by Susan Seidelman, who's probably most famous for uh, Desperately Seeking Susan, uh, She Devil, which is Meryl Streep's first com comedy role in Sex in the City. But she did this little lo-fi DIY masterpiece uh, that took place in, in the village, I think, in, in New York in the 80s, and it blew me away. And so that was doing something like though, like if I can combine those three movies, and that's essentially what I did. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and you are on a good start by having this actor, Sidney Flanagan, in your film. Uh, Sidney, I mean, geez, uh, I don't know if you know this, you won my Best Actor Award on my on a MovieGuy.com the year that you made uh, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always. I mean, that film is amazing, and that was your first performance, your first film, a and so... I, I kind of am asking you a pretty long-winded question, but have you, with, with the kind of recognition that you got from your first feature, mm. uh, have you gone forward, like going forward with that success and that pressure, have you felt pressure from that? Or is it just like, now you're ready to sort of stretch your wings a little bit more and do other films? Oh yeah. I mean, um, I've definitely worked on a few films since Never Rarely and you know, it's it it's um definitely done a lot of like drama still, you know. It's actually been a lot of like thrillers. Yeah. Um for some reason. <laughs> but like it just happened that way. But um yeah, I mean I definitely wanted to like break away from kind of like I mean, I don't think I'll ever work on anything that was as heavy as Never Rarely. You know what I mean? Like I feel like, you know, as a woman, like <laughs> it's probably the heaviest thing I can work on. You yeah. know, and um, in a way, it almost made everything else after it easier, right? Like, um, but no, I definitely um wanted to, you know, not not just be seen as like, uh, so just just this really sad, you know, like I don't want to do that sad character all the time, and I think that's like, you know, like it was really empowering to play Autumn, but like I think it felt really cool to play Bree who is such like a badass and really takes matters into her own hands. And like, um, it was definitely like a really empowering role and just more fun, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and, and, and both of you can sort of answer this question too. I mean, uh, th this is obviously a, a unique combo of you two, you and Dutch working together, how did the screenplay sort of get into your hands and and Dutch, uh, you know, the second question for you, uh, did you know that like Sydney was going to be that that Brie character right away? Um, well, I'll, I can I, I, I got to give a shout out to Rachel Maggiani at Gersh because that's who got it to Sydney. She she helped cast this and this movie wouldn't exist without her. So I want to throw that out there. Yeah. Uh, the uh, yes. Um, when you're doing a movie with this type of budget, 
you unfortunately the the people who are going to get the least amount of attention from the director is going to be the actors at the end of the day so you got to do is you got to make sure you cast actors that if the entire set burns up I die that they can still finish the day and do it. And so obviously the first step is I see, I saw Sydney in that movie and there's obviously it's an incredible movie and she's incredible in it, but there's that one scene, the titular scene. And I would put that up that one scene. I'd put that up with any scene from any motion picture ever in the history of time. I, the, the closing scene at close range with Sean Penn giving testimony against his own father. It's up there. It's, yeah. it's one of the greatest scenes ever. So yeah. I saw that. And I just, based on that, I said, if the set burns up, if I die and she just gives 10% of what she does in that one scene, we're fine. That's all I need. Uh, the second step was I met Sydney and, uh, and I, you know, I was smitten in all the great ways that you are when you meet someone that creative and that authentic and that perfect. So that I, I, you know, there was no question about whether or not she could do it. It was more a question of like, would she do it? Uh, <laughs> and luckily that um, that worked itself out. But it, it's, uh, it, that character in Brie, uh, it's a, it's, it's not, there's moments in it where like my favorite moments are towards the end of the film because I get to see, it's, that is Sydney, uh, which is what I love seeing. It's like, I get to see just, that's 100% authentic Sydney. But the rest of the movie, not to give too much away, but Sydney has to do so much and carry yeah. so much and play so many different things um, that, yes, like only Sydney could have done it. So I'm very grateful that to have met Sydney. Sydney knows I tell her all the time. Very grateful to have met her. And I'm also very grateful that she agreed to do this film. Yeah. Um, it, well, it, it's interesting too uh, for you, Sydney. I mean, you, as we talked about it, you're, again, your career is still growing and still going strong in terms of just where it's headed it can only go up from here uh but and dutch is one of like your third directors that you've worked with but how have you sort of grown from film to film i mean like it, with this movie do you sort of do hands off and say to dutch like hey you tell me where to be what to do how to do it what kind of or is it or are you finding that you like to work more collaboratively with your directors on each film? Um, yeah, I've always liked to work collaboratively. Um, you know, I'm someone who's used to working in a band, you know, where you have to very much riff off of each other and it's a collaborative process. And, yeah. um, you know, to create that final product, everyone has their own part in the arrangement. And yeah, um, yeah so like, I don't know. I like, I don't, I don't like to think I'm the only person like I, I like to feel strongly about my choices, but I don't think that I know everything and I appreciate the input of others. Right. Well, that, yeah. And that's like a great humility to have. And I think like that's a, that I think you can't have really success without allowing that collaboration sort of to work. Uh, you you also have a really sort of unique, young, youthful collection of actors here that you're working with, and 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 even a lot of your uh, your scenes are in a interrogation room <laughs> at, at some points. Uh, can you talk and and Dutch can answer this as well? Can you talk about sort of how the environment was collectively with this cast? Did did, did you guys feel like? connected from day one did it take some growing what was that process like um yeah so I definitely like with the cast I felt connected with them from day one I made an effort to get connected with them um yeah. like I we all grabbed dinner the first night at the Denny's across the street from the hotel Love and it. um <laughs> we started like a group chat and I remember Will I don't, titled the group chat let's deal these mm, mother of evan coins and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is still active today they've been it just kind of like you know reanimated itself a few days ago <laughs> we're about to see each other but um yeah yeah i don't know we just we all became like super close super fast and um i it, it definitely helped like it helped a lot because you know we were like it just it felt like we were like a little mystery gang like yeah. <laughs> Yeah. um yeah yeah it, it really helped to feel so close to everybody uh and improve our performances together yeah yeah I love that 
Um, Dutch for you question. I mean, like in terms of like genre mixing, I mean, you, you in this film, you even have like bits of animation. You've got, as you said, it's, it, you know, tight quarters conversations uh, between characters, but then there's also like this heist sort of uh, entity to it, but also, and I felt like there's just a lot of characters to it, which reminds me of like Coen brothers kind of movies. Uh, can you talk about sort of mixing genre styles a little bit or like trying to put together and make all those pieces fit to sort of maybe and maybe that's in the editing process but I just think it's like fascinating how this movie is a lot of things at once but yet it all is cohesive and makes this really interest like honestly surprisingly cool movie which is what I kept picking up on well, I appreciate that. I, um, I, because I'm a writer first and foremost. That's what I've been doing for so long, and pitching and and structure is a big part of that. Like even if you if you pitch for a job, you have to break down the 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 structure. You got to say when the inciting incident. This is before you've written it. You got to know when the plot points are. You got to know when the midpoint is. And sometimes they even want you to know what page you're going to be on when you hit these things. So for me, if I'm the way that my brain works is if I'm breaking something down, and especially if it's multiple genres, I don't do the idea. I it, it, I don't try to put them all at the same time. So for me, it's structurally, it's like with this, it's like the first opening is a heist movie. Yeah. Then it gets into sort of like a horror thriller. And then by the time you're in the third act, you've got a, you know, Hercule Poirot, you know, summation gathering the end of a Agatha Christie mystery where, you know, he, I don't want to get away too much, but he mansplains the, uh, how it all came together. Yeah. So for me, that's how I look at, I compartmentalize genres as opposed to just putting them all together in a blender. Yeah. Um, Tonally, it's very tricky for something like this because you're dealing with the artifice, but you don't want the performances to play into that. Yeah. So like, not that I'm comparing myself to him at all. You bring up the Coen brothers. I would, one of my heroes when I was a kid was Peter Greenaway and the way that he dealt with the artifice, but the performances, like there's a movie he did called, which you can't recommend anyone because it's so brutal, the baby of Macan, but it's yeah. Julio Armand and Ray Fiennes. And they're, I mean, they are brilliant. Like they, it's the greatest performance I've ever seen. But and they go all in and they expose themselves in every way, but they're surrounding it's like they're in a theater piece. So everything is artificial. And it's that type of, you know, that's the that's the other thing that I like to compartmentalize. And I rely a lot on the actors and their performances, keeping it grounded. Because if it's, if I'm left to my own devices, the film would float off into space. So I need the actors to be that gravity. And that and and the same with the genre. So I have all these elements. But at the end of the day, it's people like Sydney and Will and Darius and DeFaro and Fred and John Grice who keep it watchable and keep it relatable. And right. um, that's that's that to me, that's the, that's the concoct. That's the alchemy. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. Uh, and that, you know, again, that like I said, it all works. I mean, it's like you like you said, you bring these actors in uh to ground the material and then you sort of uh, mold your style around them I, I i absolutely love that um sydney you as we talked about a little bit you're in tight quarters with one actor for for a lot of these scenes uh which is entirely different from what you what you did in never uh, rarely sometimes always uh did in terms of working with frederick weller in those sequences is that like um let's just go in fresh and not really know each other and have a lot of mystery to it. I know you talked about like having meals and connections with the rest of the cast, but there that's, there's different dynamics with characters. So do you sort of approach each scene differently or is it just uh, all in the character already? Um, I like, let's see, I, I can't recall when, Fred got on set I mean it wasn't till we shot those scenes right which was like towards the end of the shoot yeah um, I think like uh I may have like eaten at the same lunch table as him like a few times or something but um I didn't make any conscious effort to connect with him or to not connect with him really yeah. um I uh it's just not really how my brain works when it comes to acting or something like I um like avoiding certain people because of our connections in the film I don't know I yeah I, I very much and it's hard for me to not want to just like after the scene is over to like relax and be like hey what's up right. you know um I I kind of need that to 
ground myself between those moments because otherwise I kind of feel like I'm slowly going insane. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one the one interesting thing was when Fred came in, it was at the end. All the everyone the boys had left. Yeah. Then, there was a I feel like there was sort of a dramatic because she she had bonded with these guys and then they were gone and she's left in the middle of Texas by herself and then here comes Fred from <laughs> New York and so it did give a it did give an interesting um balance yeah dynamic for those dynamic. scenes that's the word I was looking for thanks dynamic yeah. awesome all right well thank you so much both of you for being here with me today congratulations uh, Only the Good Survive is premiering this Friday, uh, March 10th in Austin for the South by Southwest Film Festival. So congratulations to both of you. And uh, it's exciting. Hope to uh, see you guys there in Austin. Congrats. Awesome. Thank you. Great, great to meet you. You too. Thank you so much.